What's up everybody, it's Travis here from Travis.media. So a few days ago, Microsoft announced GitHub Copilot X. And amidst all of the chat GPT talk and the GPT-4 talk, I feel like this development is super relevant for developers. So in this video, I wanna do two things. One, I wanna talk about how GitHub Copilot has been doing so far with developers, how it's been ranking with developers. Do they like it? Do they not like it? And two, I wanna answer what is GitHub Copilot X and what is all of the amazingness that comes with it. If you're looking for answers like, will AI take my job? Or should I even learn to code with all of the AI stuff coming out this year? Then check out my last video. I talk about all of that there. In this video, I wanna stay focused on GitHub Copilot X. In case you didn't know it, Microsoft is completely dominating AI this year. From having a large share in OpenAI, to GitHub Copilot, to all of the Bing AI tools, and even Microsoft 365 Copilot. Have you seen this yet? Imagine an Excel spreadsheet of data and being able to ask it to analyze it and give you three key trends. Or telling it to apply some color coding to the table to help it stand out. Or to even project the future growth of a graph. You got the past data, the present data. Tell me where this trend is gonna go. Or think about this prompt in PowerPoint. Create a five slide presentation based on a Word document and include relevant stock photos. Or how about Outlook? Summarize the emails I missed while I was out last week. Flag any important items for me. Or how about with Word? Create a one page draft based on this rough outline that I made. Or make the third paragraph more concise for me. I think that's pretty amazing. And I think that's rolled out to a select audience. It's not out yet, but I think that's gonna have a big impact this year. But we're not here to talk about Microsoft 365 Copilot. We're here to talk about GitHub Copilot. So GitHub Copilot itself has been out for a while. It's marketed as your AI pair programmer, and it's pretty accurate. If you check out the page here, uh, you'll see how it works. So you can type some comments, like get average runtime of successful runs in seconds, and it'll actually generate the function for you with pretty good accuracy. Or you can just name the method, like max sum slice, and it'll give you suggestions on what you should type. And then here's some more examples. So fetch tweets and it generates the code for you. Draw a scatter plot. Um, get a rating from Goodreads. See how much that generates. And there's JavaScript, there's Python, here's Ruby, here's TypeScript, here's Go. But have developers been using this? Are developers happy? Are developers getting value out of it? Well, GitHub did some research quantifying GitHub Copilot's impact on developer productivity and happiness. So just to summarize this, I don't want to stay here too long, but just to summarize this, they surveyed more than 2,000 developers, and here's what they found. Finding one, developer productivity goes beyond speed. Developers are satisfied, so improving developer satisfaction, and they're able to conserve mental energy by using Copilot. And then you'll see here, I am more productive, I'm less frustrating when coding, I can focus on more satisfying work, things like that. Now, finding two is that they are actually faster. So they took 95 developers, put them in two groups, one using Copilot, one not using Copilot. And the group using Copilot finished 55% faster than the other group. And here's kind of a summary of the whole article. We're here to support developers while they build software. That's the point of these AI tools. They're here to support you. They're here is like an assistant to help you out, to help you from getting frustrated and burned out and things like that. So in our research, we saw that GitHub Copilot supports faster completion times, conserves developers' mental energy, helps them focus on more satisfying work, and ultimately find more fun in the coding they do. So I think developers are really finding value in this. And as a developer, I think it's important to dig into this Copilot ecosystem. Because ChatGPT, that's for like the bigger masses. You can use it for your coding. People do and they do successfully. But entrepreneurs can use it. And technical writers can use it. Bloggers can use it. Mothers can use it. Kids can use it. There's lots of use cases. It's a wide use case for ChatGPT. GitHub Copilot is specific for developers. So with all of that success, why GitHub Copilot X? So like I said, they announced this a couple of days ago. And the point of it is kind of found in the name. GitHub Copilot X. This X is a placeholder for different things that Copilot is going to be able to do. So think GitHub Copilot Docs, GitHub Copilot PR, GitHub Copilot Blocks, GitHub Copilot CLI. That X is a placeholder for all of its capabilities. So you'll see here with chat and terminal interfaces, support for pull requests, in early adoption of OpenAI's GPT-4, GitHub Copilot X is their vision for the future of AI-powered software development. So that's another thing. It uses the GPT-4 model. And not only is that more accurate and faster, 
But the big improvement is that it gives you 25,000 tokens or word count, as opposed to the older model that gives you 3,000. So when you write a prompt, you can't go over 3,000 with the old model. That's where chat GPT is. You got a 3,000 word count limit. Well, GPT-4, on top of its improvements, gives you a 25,000 word count limit. So that in itself was amazing to me. But as I started looking more into it, this is a huge improvement in the direction that Microsoft is going is going to be massive for the developer community. So look at some of these features here. So first you have this chat aware conversations. So in your VS code or Visual Studio, you're going to have this chat window. So highlight some code. Here's some Python here. Highlight that. And then over here, you can ask it to write unit test functions for your code, or you can tell it to explain your code, or you can say, what is this variable doing? So here it says, write a set of unit test functions for the selected code. It writes the unit test, and then it explains what it does. Uh, down here, it says, if you're stuck solving a problem, ask GitHub Copilot to explain a piece of code, bump it to an error, have GitHub Copilot fix it. It'll even generate unit tests so you can get back to building what's next. Next, there's the tailored docs. So instead of having to visit documentation, think React or MDN or AWS, you can just ask and have it generate answers based on the integrated documentation. It will answer your questions based on the documentation. So here it says, spend less time searching and more time learning by getting personalized answers that are grounded in maintainer written documentation. And we can see better examples of this here. So Copilot for Docs. If you look at this video, here is Copilot for Docs. The doc sets they're working with now is GitHub, React.js, MDN, and Azure. I'm sure this will be expanded. But if you watch here, this user chooses React.js and it asks a question. My component re-renders too often. And it reaches out to the React documentation and pulls in some answers. There are several possible reasons why to avoid this, blah, blah, blah. And then over here to the right, you'll get the reference to the documentation. So that'll come up and you can click on it and go straight to that point in the documentation. That's pretty neat. In the example here, how do I vertically center a div? They're pulling from the MDN docs, which is a website full of documentation for so many things, web development. And it explains there are different ways to vertically center a div. Here's some code on how to do it and some other pointers. So I think that's great. Instead of having to visit the docs, just ask GitHub Copilot. It'll pull from there, give you the answers and the link to that specific part in the documentation. Now the next feature and a really big one, I think, is pull requests. So GitHub keeps track of your work. It suggests descriptions and helps reviewers reason about your changes with a code walkthrough. So when you create a PR, you usually have to write up what you did. What does the code do? Well, GitHub Copilot will do all of that for you. It'll analyze your code and build out your PR for you. And let's look at this in more detail. So Copilot for pull requests. Check out these examples. So suggestions for your pull request description. There's a couple of markers you can use. So there's Copilot Summary, which expands to a one paragraph summary of the changes in a pull request. And then there's Copilot Walkthrough, which expands to a detailed list of changes, including links to the relevant pieces of code. So if you look at this example here, this is really, really good. So here's a PR. You have the description, you have the related issue and the explanation of changes. Normally, you're gonna describe your PR, you're going to link to the related issue, and then you're going to have to explain all of your changes. And no developers really like to do this. So what GitHub Copilot does, if you watch this, you can use these markers. So up here under description, they're going to put Copilot summary. And then under explanation of changes, they'll put Copilot walkthrough. And so they're using these markers to tell Copilot to fill in this information for them. So once they process this, it processes and the PR is written for them. So here is the description that's going to read the code and describe what's going on. And then there's the explanation of changes, which is going to describe all of the changes. I think that's huge. And I know I'll use that personally 100%. Another neat feature is that if you add some code that doesn't have testing to back it, it will automatically generate some tests for your code. Um, it says, I found two changes that may need tests without a corresponding test suite. So there's some changes, nobody wrote tests for them. Let me do it for you. It sees your changes in the file, like right here, waterheater.py, and it realizes, hey, with these changes, you might need some tests. And so it's gonna suggest some tests for you. There's a button here that says suggests tests. 
and writes the tests for you. Next up, ghost text. This is just like auto suggestions. It just gets better at auto suggesting. You'll see it pop up here. So that's neat. But I think this one right here is big. Resolving issues with AI. So imagine somebody creates an issue in your repo. They say, hey, you should replace TensorFlow with PyTorch. And you get it and you're like, oh, that's gonna be a big task. How do I do that? Well, when someone creates the issue, GitHub Copilot can automatically describe how to solve that issue and even automatically suggest the changes you need to make. So check this one out. Someone's creating an issue, replace TensorFlow with PyTorch, submit new issue. And then you're gonna type slash PR bot how, how do I do this? Run that. And GitHub Copilot gives you steps on how to actually do this in the issue. And then other people can say, that's a good idea, or I would switch this, I would change this type of thing. Then there's another feature called PR bot suggest. It says, consider using PR bot suggest to see some possible code changes. So they're gonna type this. And it's actually gonna search through your code files and tell you what should be changed to implement this change. Now it's not gonna be perfect, but I think that's a big step in advancement. Next, there's reviewing pull requests with AI. So in this video, we use AI to describe the changes in the pull request and to review the code. So let's see if we can describe this pull request. Somebody sends you a pull request and you're like, I have no clue, no context on this. You can ask it to describe it to you. So it searched through these two files and it gave a description down here. This pull request makes the following changes. Pretty helpful. Then there's AI powered uh, PR completion, PR repair and review responses. So I think the PR part of GitHub Copilot is gonna be really helpful. The next feature is the GitHub Copilot CLI. So forget how to delete a tag, ask GitHub Copilot for assistance right in your terminal. So what this does is you can ask it how to do something in the terminal. It will tell you the command, it'll build out the command for you. It'll explain what the command does and then it gives you a prompt. Do you wanna run this? Do you wanna revise the query or cancel it? So you'll see all of that right here. But looking at it more in depth, Copilot for CLI, and it's basically just assistance in your terminal. Um, examples here, there are three modes of interaction. There's the question mark, question mark, which is meant as a general purpose go-to for arbitrary shell commands. So you wanna know how to list JS files, and it generates you this find command here with a grep addition to it. And then there's git question mark, which is used for git invocations. So here it's saying git list all commits, and it tells you the command to do that with git. And then there's gh question mark, which combines the GitHub CLI query interface with the convenience of having AI generate the complicated flags and JQ expressions for you. So here you're asking list all closed PRs, and it gives you this gh PR list with all of its arguments. So all this is, is just copilot for CLI. You're gonna use your CLI, you forgot some commands, you can just ask GitHub Copilot to generate those commands for you and describe to you what it's doing. And these are the four features listed on this page, but there's more. Check this out. So if you go to githubnext.com, you can see what's out there, what's coming next, and all of that good stuff with GitHub. And if you scroll down through projects, you'll see Copilot for Docs, which we looked at, Copilot for Pull Requests, we looked at, Copilot for CLI, then there's Copilot Voice. Check this out. So write code without the keyboard. Difficulty typing, use your voice to code without spelling things out. And there's an example here. You're not gonna be able to hear this because there's a guy talking, telling GitHub what to type, but you can see it pop up here. Maybe I can bring these headphones up to my microphone. Get Titanic CSV data from the web and clean records from Titanic data where age is null. Fill null values of column fair with average column values. Drop duplicates from the frame Titanic data. Hey GitHub, new line. Plot line graph of age versus fair column. Change to scatter plot. Show plot. Hey GitHub, exit code mode. Hey GitHub, run program. So this guy just told GitHub Copilot to type all this code for him. He said, import pandas, import this library, get this Titanic data. He didn't have to say from where. He just said, get the Titanic data from the web. Then he's like, clean up the values that have null for age, find the fares, put this information together and plot a graph all in Python. And he didn't have to type anything. Now I think this is neat because many of us talk to ourselves while we code. And so if I could just talk instead of type, that might be good. 
might not be good, I don't know, but I think it's neat. So that's Copilot Voice. Then there's Code Brushes. So if we look at that, um, we've added a toolbox of brushes to our Visual Studio Code extension that can modify your code. So check this out. Here's some use cases. So make code more readable. You'll see this long convoluted function here. If you brush over it, it turns into an if-else statement. Um, add types. So we have this code here. We have AB. How about we add the type of number to AB? It does that for you. Fix simple bugs. They misspelled this word low. So how do you fix that? GitHub Copilot fixes it. Add debugging statements to console log out some important stuff. Make your code more robust. So if you need some more browser support, you can do that. And more, you can define your own custom brushes as well. I don't know how this works. I haven't used this, but it's actually out there already for you to use if you have GitHub Copilot and you have the extension. There's another extension called GitHub Copilot Labs. So a VS Code extension for experimental applications of GitHub Copilot. So there's the Copilot extension, and then there's this extra extension for experimental applications. You can sign up for it, and it gives you that feature, that brush, brush feature. Actually, it has a number of features. It has a test generation where you can generate tests. It can explain the code to you. It can translate the code so you can take some Python. You can change it to like JavaScript and some other things. So that's already out there. And with that, you can get this code brushing feature. And then finally, there's a number of things here that you can look at. But the last one I want to talk about is GitHub Blocks. So reimagine repositories with custom interactive blocks, build rich documentation, enhance your workflows, and bring your code base to life. So here's GitHub Blocks. And what it does basically is it makes your repository more lively with like charts and graphs and things like that. So you'll see as I scroll down, um, there's an image beside this code. So this code actually executes into a graph here beside it. Uh, here's some other charts. Um, create searchable reference documentations. Turn your repository structure into your table of contents. Uh, if you have a bunch of JSON here and want to make it nice, it will put it in a chart for you, like a spreadsheet chart. That's kind of neat. And some other things you can see here, if you go to this page, blocks.githubnext.com, you can see all of the examples. Here it says, understand the health of your community and the people who are part of it. Understand the structure of your code at a glance. So here's like a, a plot graph of your code. And that's GitHub Blocks. And that's it. That's all I have to show you. And that excites me. I don't know about you, but I find all of this exciting. AI is something that developers need to embrace. If you don't embrace it, you're going to fall behind and you're going to be replaced. All of this here is to enable us to be more efficient. It's to keep us from burning out. It's to enable us to do a better job. And I think GitHub Copilot is doing a good job of moving all of this forward. And that's all really I wanted to demo today. If you look at this list, uh, most of it's still on the wait list. So docs, pull requests, CLI, voice, they're still on the wait list. Uh, code brushes, there's that extension for that that I mentioned. GitHub Blocks has a wait list. Um, GitHub Copilot Radar, Incremental Code QL, Test Pilot, GitHub Copilot Labs. These are like usable prototypes. But I think most of this, you got to get on the wait list. And you have to be a GitHub Copilot paying customer. It's like 10 bucks a month, which I think is very reasonable for the value that you get. So I hope this was helpful. I hope you know more about GitHub Copilot X now and how you might start using this in the coming weeks and months. And if you have any questions, leave a comment down below. If you found this helpful, thumbs up, consider subscribing, and I'll see you in the next video.